Hey everybody, it's Scott Weller here, and today we're going to walk through how to do SDXL inside of Comfy. So this is kind of the core to our, I want to say official workflow, but one that a lot of us use, and this is our point of departure. So there's a lot of other things that we're doing in here, uh, but this is the same from person to person. So I kind of want to pass this one on to you as I say, this is the one you should start with and then get creative. Now I'm going to show you how to make the basic one first, and then we're going to convolute it. So over this course of this video, we're going to do some things that you're not going to expect. And they are things you cannot do inside of automatic 1111 yet. I'm sure that along this road, there will be the ability to do different things with the refinement passes we're going to show off. Uh, so let's get to it. Okay, uh, so this is going to be the core graph that I pretty much use whenever I'm doing any sort of uh, quality assurance and stability. Uh, so this is kind of the the simple one uh, they can get very complicated but i want to show you at least how to start out and this is going to get a little complicated near the end of this video as well so even if you're a person who uses comfy and sdxl i will show you some things that you may not know uh, so first of all we need to load in our checkpoint so we're just going to right click add node and loaders and checkpoint now no i may have uh, a lot of nodes here you don't have uh, i wouldn't worry about those we're not going to use a lot of those today but again you can grab uh, these from civet has most of these available. Uh, so we have our checkpoint here. So let's go ahead and load in our SDXL. And once we have our base loaded in, there's also a refiner. We're gonna deal with that in a minute. And we're not gonna complicate our lives with that yet. Uh, so here, I'm gonna just change the color of this uh, to uh, blue, just so I have uh, some sanity with uh, the graph that's gonna get complicated. All right now we need to condition the clip coming out of here and SDXL has its own conditioners for that. And I find it easiest if you just double click and choose SDXL, it's easy to search for. And again, we have two right here. We're gonna want the one that's the regular one, not the refiner version yet. Uh, so we're gonna just drag the clip into this. And then here we have the width and height, and then we have a target width and height. Uh, so for this width and height, I usually put this to uh, 4096. Yeah. And then we have a clip G and clip L. Now these are our positive prompts. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna make these the same. Uh, but I also don't want to type these a whole bunch of times because we are going to use the positive and negative prompt uh, repeatedly. Uh, so what I want to do is right click here and I can convert these to node inputs. So now there's a node input up here and the space has gone away. So same thing for this one. And what I want to do is I want to put text into this. And the easiest way to do that is with a primitive. So if I drag this out and I can add node here and under utilities, you're gonna find a primitive. And the primitive can be a string or an integer or a float or what have you. So I have this here for my positive prompt and we're gonna use it in both of these areas here. Now this set of nodes here is my positive prompt. So I'm gonna highlight both of them with the control key. And obviously I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna say control, but if you're on a Mac, you know that that's a command key. Uh, so just convert. <laughs> so here I'm just gonna go ahead and hit green. Now if I control, C to copy these. Uh, so if you, again, if you just highlight them both, oops, highlight them both and hit Control C. If you do Control Shift V, it will copy them with the connections in place. And we need those now. We're going to go ahead and change the color of these to red. So we have our positive and our negative prompt. So I thought for our positive prompt, say robot, a robot shopping at Walgreens. Now the negative prompt isn't as important. Uh, and I know a lot of people go nuts inside the negative prompt. I mean, there's so many things in there that are just urban legends that you do not need to be putting in there to begin with. Uh, so you can leave this blank or just put in something that is the opposite of whatever this scene is. So like um, rocks would be good. I don't expect to see any rocks inside of a scene uh, with a robot shopping at Walgreens. So why not just put that in there? Uh, so the, the idea here is kind of the, the opposite feeling or concept of what you're trying to do. At least that's the way in my mind I like to look at it. Uh, and I think that just works easier than coming up with this list of things like extra fingers, which don't work how you think they work anyway. All right, so now we have our conditioning. We need to do is we need to sample from this. And we're gonna use an advanced sampler. Uh, so we can, again, you could right click and try and find it. But again, I just find it easier if I just type in K sampler. And I don't want this one. I want the complicated advanced one. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, but it does have some more capability, which we do want to use. So here's my positive and my negative. My model. And then we're going to need an empty latent. And that's kind of the base noise for this entire thing. So again, you can do add node latent and then you can add empty latent. 
Again, with this model, it was trained at 1024. So you're going to want to use uh, that size or larger. I think we're gonna have quality issues if we make a much smaller image. So I would just keep it right around this size. Obviously it handles different aspect ratios as well. There you go, that's beautiful. And then obviously from this latent here, we need to decode it. Uh, and we see VAE decoder here. Uh, I just drag it out and let go. And usually there's a pretty good guess as to what, what you're gonna need here. Use this VAE. And of course, then we're going to go ahead and preview the image. Now remember, save and preview are different. Preview is just gonna show it to us and save is gonna show it to us as well as save it. Uh, so whichever one works best for you. I think I'll just use the save one uh, for giggles. Good. So you notice it has file name prefix is set to comfy UI and you can change this to whatever you'd like, but I'm going to leave it right like it is. And that should be it. Now let's talk for a minute here about the sampler uh, because we're going to run into this uh, in a bit. And I want you to kind of be clear about a few things. Uh, first of all, we have a start step and an end step. And you notice the end step is set to 10,000 by default. And you're like, well, that's just nuts. Well, this, this relationship between the number of steps is going to perform and the start and end steps is an interesting one. So if you start fiddling with this end step and the number of steps, you're going to find out that you can run into some situations where the sampler kind of throws bizarre things at you. Uh, so again, you might have some sort of like creative moment and go, wow, this I, I found some sort of really neat formula in here. But in general, I would tell you to just leave end steps at 10,000 and focus instead on the step start and then the number of steps. So in this case, we're just going to do 20 and starting at zero, and this is fine. And then you can choose whatever sampler you'd like. Um, I prefer this uh, DPM++, the Simple Differential Equation GPU version, so the SDE GPU. Uh, that's the one I'm gonna use here. And then for the seed, um, I'm just gonna choose just a regular value here of four, and then I'm gonna change this to fixed. So I don't wanna have a whole lot of moving variables when I'm trying to kind of configure something. Once I've got it configured, then I'll start randomizing things. But trying to, to track something down with all random numbers is difficult. And so this should be a good start graph. And there we go, a robot shopping at Walgreens. And that's a very basic comfy graph for uh, SDXL. Now, now let's make it more interesting. So we've got this and it's fine, but we can do better. And that's where the refiner comes in. So to bring the refiner in, we're gonna load it just like we would another checkpoint. So I'm just gonna alt click and drag this out and then select it from the dropdown. And then from here, I want to use another sampler uh, to kind of work with it. But the con clip conditioning is a little bit different for this one. Uh, so you're gonna notice before when we, we search for the clip conditioners for SDXL, um, if we type in SDXL, we have the refiner version. So we're gonna grab this encoder here and we're gonna drag our clip in. So this is our positive one. And you notice that has an A score. This is the aesthetic score. And six seems to be kind of a sweet spot for this, uh, in our opinion. Uh, so we usually start here. And then for the negative one, uh, we're gonna use a 2.5. Again, feel free to fiddle with these, but again, these are a good point of departure. And if you're gonna make this graph something you're gonna reuse a lot, I would save these as variables. Uh, so again, you could drag out other primitives for setting your height and width. Uh, just make sure they're divisible by 16 for best results. So here again, I'm going to go ahead and convert this text input for both of these, this is going to be our positive one here. So we'll just change that green. And then we're going to borrow the same positive prompt here. And this one here, well, oops, sorry. This one here, orange, red, and again. Yeah. And you can also click this dot to minimize that. Uh, thanks to somebody who pointed that out last time. I never knew that. I kept right clicking and collapsing. So thank you for that tip. All right. Now, in this case, I have my sampler and I'm going to just duplicate it. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to do this step after this one. So this is our first sampler. And then I want to do the refiner. And to keep track of these, I'm actually going to change this one uh, to blue because it is using the base here. And we'll change this, our refiner, purple. And then I can change this one to purple as well. So we kind of keep track of which refiner is using or which sampler is using which, which thing. Uh, so in this case, we have this model. So we'll grab this model here. And we have our positive, negative. And then our latent image is going to be the one that comes out of this base. We'll just grab that, drag that up here. Now, um, I kind of want to see the difference between these two things. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to uh, leave these attached. 
to this uh, base case sampler here. So this will be our base image. And again, if I want to, I can change the color of this one uh, to blue. So I can keep track of the fact that this is the base sampled version. And then we want to look at what's coming out of this. Um, and I'm just going to borrow the same thing here. In fact, um, I think I might change this one to the preview because I don't intend to keep this uh, node, uh, me or this this image here. Let's just drag this out as a preview image instead of it being a save image. That way we don't have to deal with a bunch of junk on our hard drives, which I'm sure none of you have the same problem I do with about a thousand things you love and then you have to sort through them again later. So in this case, I have this one here and it's going to borrow latent off of that. And the VAE has to come from uh, this, this refiner here as well. So just drag that over. So we'll have our final one in here. Now, this is kind of where the fun starts is, is looking at these two samplers and figuring out the differences between them and where you want one to work. So the base sample here, we want to make sure we pass any leftover noise uh, to the sampler. This is like a, a best practice. And in order to do, you know, to have the sampler do something, I want to leave some wiggle room. So I would probably bring this down to something like maybe 12 or 13 steps. I wouldn't do all the work in here. And then from here, uh, we're actually doing 20 more steps, but let's start at step 12. So again, I would use uh, some other nodes to kind of help control these things. Uh, but for the sake of this demo, we're just going to do it the old fashioned way. Uh, so we're going to start with the base sampler. We're going to start at zero and go to 12 steps. And then we're going to pass it to the refiner at 12 steps and then finish to uh, do 20 more. So this, this should work just great. Run it and see what happens. Note that it starts with the last changed item, which would be this one. And then it's going to go ahead and load the finer in after this step. It didn't have to load the base one because it already had it. So here's our base image. Oh, and I'm sitting here wondering why it wasn't working. And I think I see it right away. And that's this negative one here doesn't have the clip. So you need a positive and a negative in order to make this function. So I'm sitting there staring at it going, why isn't it moving? <laughs> there we go. Uh, so make sure you have both of these connected. There we go. Now it's loading in the refiner. It does get to be a little bit of noodly goodness all over the place. And there we go. So we should end up with uh, a little bit more detail and let the refiner kind of do its job, uh, which is obviously to kind of perfect the image you're handing it. Oh, we'll see if we get these about the same size. I usually overlap them a bit so I can kind of see like to like. But yeah, see we have a little bit more detail and so on. Obviously we have more steps as well, so that also helps. Uh, but there, I think the refiner is very good at fixing some things like faces, for example. It's not a GAN, uh, but it works off, again, a different model has been trained on different content uh, to help, again, refine the image. All right, so this is all well and good, but let's add one more weird little convolution that I promised you would be find, finding interesting. And that is we're going to add one more refining step, but we're going to add it before the base step. So kind of a initializer or a latent noise conditioner, however you want to call it. Uh, so I'm just going to grab both of these or all three of these and say, scoot these over. And we're going to use one more of these refinement ones version. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it with that V trick again, because most of this is correct, except that the latent noise is going to be the empty latent noise. We're going to hand that in. And then this latent here is what we're going to pass uh, on to the base here. Instead of it going uh, from the other, the other one down below the empty, we're going to come from. So there we go. So it's kind of simple. We just tuck that in there. Now, what are we going to do with this? Where does this get interesting? And that is with the, steps and the starts. So we're only going to do three steps. Let's just bring this down to three. And then we're going to start at step zero. And then here we're going to start at three and go up to 12. And then we're going to continue on our way away. So this is the first three steps are really roughed in by the refiner instead of by the base. So you're going to get a little bit different result. Uh, this is just a kind of a fun little concept of conditioning the latent noise uh, before we actually start seriously sampling it. Obviously, we're always experimenting with different things. So, I mean, feel free to play around and see what you can come up with. Again, there's all kinds of crazy ideas and thoughts we try. Um, so feel free to play around and see if you can come up with some super secret ingredient that you find interesting.
So pretty fun. Uh, really interesting example of a uh, robot at Walgreens. So this core graph, once this is saved off and the save image obviously went to my hard drive, now I can just drag and drop that image in and it will reload the entire graph for me. So this is a fantastic way to kind of continue working on a project. Uh, but note that if you don't want these shared, you make sure that you strip the metadata out of it, uh, like converting it to a JPEG and things like that, so that you don't accidentally share your entire graph with the world. Now, I'm a big fan of letting people see how this stuff is done, obviously. Uh, so uh, I'm, I want you to know how to do it, but I also want you to be protected in case you come up with something and you don't want to share it with the rest of the world. At least now you know uh, you need to avoid sharing the actual PNG because it will have the metadata embedded in it. But this is a this is a rough graph, a good place to start and then get creative with it. So this is the way that I do it at Stability. And again, we, we kind of take and, and convolute it from here. But this three steps uh, is a pretty interesting concept. Uh, again, this new... This new idea of conditioning the latent is something we're just starting to play with a bit, or at least I am personally. Uh, so it's uh, it's fun. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Uh, so this was kind of our core uh, that we use here at Stability. So everybody kind of does their own thing, but this core is pretty much the same uh, for most people. And then we take and run and get weird with it. Uh, so if there's things or ideas you have or suggestions in your own workflow you find interesting, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Uh, but if you love the video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And of course, a lot more videos are coming. Uh, so let me know where you're getting stuck or if you're having problems, and I'll try and walk you through it. Uh, so thanks again once for joining me. Everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.